Dr. Tim Blakely. He's going to be our guest speaker, so let's give him a warm Thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here this morning. I'm still this chair. Y'all doing all right? Yeah. Y'all sounded good. Not just the band, but like hearing all y'all out there. Um, they sounded really good this morning. Uh, it's a little wet outside, right? Just a little. Yeah, when I left the house this morning, I was really wondering if I was going to make it. I thought I needed a boat just to get out of the yard. Um, and uh, then on the way here, it was coming down really, really hard. Um, but water's a big deal, right? I mean, we, we, we need water to survive. Our bodies are mostly water, if you know anything about that. Uh, and in order to uh, keep living, we need to drink water, right? Uh, well, what kind of water do you, you want to drink? Clean, pure water, right? That's, that's nice and, and clear and, and, and looks good, kind of like this, right? This is a new bottle. I just opened up a minute ago because I needed this week. Um, but this is a new bottle of water, clean, pure water. I mean, you can see through it. No, no impurities in there. It tasted really good while I'm going to drink some. And so we, we like that kind of water, right? And so, but like if you went outside, if you said, hey, I'm thirsty, and you went outside and you saw a puddle of water outside, are you just going to dip down and drink something out of it? Wow. It's nasty, right? It's, it's gross. It's kind of like this this morning. Like I said, there's a lot of water in our yard, so I walked out to the end of our uh, garage there and dipped some water out of the puddle. The thing is, in our yard, we got a couple of dogs, and so when you dip water out of the yard, it's not just dirt and grass and stuff like that in there. There's also some other things floating around in the water. Um, and so if, if I gave you this, would anybody drink it? It's nasty, right? It's gross. It's been contaminated. Okay? And so we, we wouldn't drink anything like that. But, but here's the deal. When you, when you look at the Bible, especially when you go all the way back to, to Genesis and then the creation, when God created everything, when He made Adam and Eve, when He first made man, He made us to be pure. Right? Uh, he created Adam and Eve in His image. Created all of us still in His image. But he created us to be pure, like this water that's clean, it's purified. Uh, I took the label off, but the label said purified, okay? Um, so it's been clean. And that's the way God intended for us to be. But then this little thing came in the world, this big thing really, this is, it's a little word called sin, right? And sin is anything that we think, say, or do that goes against God's word, that goes against God's will for our lives. Um, and what that sin does is it makes us dirty, makes us unclean. Um, and, and the Bible talks about this sin in this way. In, in the book of Romans, it tells us that nobody's perfect. Uh, ever since the, in the garden when Adam and Eve, when they ate that fruit, sin entered the world. And from then on out, all humanity has been made dirty. Because of that sin. Uh, and, and, and the problem with that is, in Romans it tells us that because of that sin, God's Word tells us that we deserve punishment. But we're no longer pure. We, we, can't, we can't be with God because of that impurity. But the thing is, God did something about that. But, but before I get to that, one thing about dirty water is this. I'm going to do this real quick. I put in there? It was just a little bit, right? But would you would you drink it still? No. Why? Because it's dirty, right? See, here's, here's the problem that we have as humans. Sometimes we think we're good enough. Okay? We think, well, you know, I, I've never really done anything bad. I mean, yeah, maybe I told a, a little white lie. You know, maybe I told my teacher I, did my homework, I just left it at home. 
but we know the truth, right? We just need to do it. Um, other things in life, just little things. And here's the deal, it still looks pretty clean. There's a little dog hair I see floating in there. But it, overall, it's pretty clean. But you still wouldn't drink it, right? Because it's dirty. And here's the deal. Again, God's Word says that, that, that we, we've all sinned. And even if it was just a little bit of sin, it's still sin. It still contaminates us. But the awesome thing about God is, is even at the very beginning, He had a plan to bring us back to where we needed to be so that we could have a relationship with Him, so that we could be clean again, so that we could be pure. Because that's what He longs for. God wants us to, to have a relationship with Him. God wants us to be able to spend eternity in heaven with Him when we die. But if we die like this, dirty, still sin in our lives, or even like this, just a little bit of sin in our lives, the Bible tells us that we, we spend eternity separated from God. We can't be with Him. But the awesome thing about Jesus is, you know, in Romans it tells us that in order to be clean, in Romans 10, it tells us that if, if we uh, confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. In other words, we say, Jesus, you're the master of my life. And we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Well, that's what the Bible teaches us. We know that when we read the Gospels about Jesus, that he came and he lived a perfect life. And then he died on the cross. He, he died a sinner's death. He died that he took that punishment that we deserved. And he died on that cross, but then he was buried. And what happened, though, on, third, on the third day, on Sunday, what happened? He rose from the dead, right? He came back from death. He defeated sin on the cross. He defeated death so that we could have eternal life. And, and, and in Romans, it tells us that if we believe that, if we confess it with our mouth, then we will be saved. We'll be made pure again. And here's what Jesus does. He doesn't just... You know, take us and clean us up and, and all that. He, he does that. But the Bible tells us He makes us a new creation. He slaps a new label on us now. We're called a child of God. And He cleanses us. He makes us pure so that now we can spend eternity with Him. And that's an awesome, awesome thing. And so here's the deal. Here's I'm going to go ahead and close up with this. If you've never made that confession, if you never believed in your heart that God, God raised Jesus from the dead, you never confessed Jesus as Lord, then I say, why not? What are you waiting on? And if that's something you, you want to talk with somebody about, I'm more than happy to talk with you. I'm sure all of these adults in here would be happy to talk with you about how you can make that decision, how you can go from being even just a little dirty to being made pure because of what Jesus did for us. Don't ever forget what Jesus has done for us. Let's pray. Well, God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for, for who you are. Thank you for the cross, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the fact that you came. You lived a life that we couldn't live. Then you died a death and paid a price that we owed. But then you overcame death. Lord, you did something that we couldn't do. You overcame sin in the grave. And you made a way for us to be pure once again. Lord Jesus, I pray for all these in here from the youngest to the oldest. Lord, that you help us to truly think about that relationship. Is it where it needs to be? Have we been purified through Jesus? Or continue to speak to our hearts and just use us however you want to. In Christ's name, amen.
guys are incredibly talented and uh, I enjoy listening to you. I enjoy being up here. I sat behind this little group right here to be able to hear these kids sing to Jesus. It's, uh, it's a remarkable thing to listen to the spirits. Thank you, Pastor, for, uh, for sharing with us today. Uh, that was the message, the most important message anybody could ever hear. My good devotion I read this morning that uh, it, it, it asked this question and said, what are you living for? What are you working for? What is your goal? And then to answer that question and say that your goal is that when you meet God, that He says to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. And imagine that for God Almighty, the creator of the entire universe, to say to you, little old Caleb McCauley, little Coach Caleb, one person out of a billion, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that, if that's something that you want to be said to you, whenever you meet God, God forbid that it be today, to ask yourself if that's something God would say to you, if that's what you want to hear. I'm not just asking, I'm telling you, come talk to me. Go talk to Coach Dower. Go talk to Coach Matt. Go talk to your teacher. There is nothing in the world that would make me happy, that would make your teacher happier, than for you to say that I want God to tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, thank you all for getting here. Thank you for the parents that came to, to hear God's word today. Uh, we will close in prayer and then we will uh, we'll ask for K3, call back K4 and K5 to, uh, to, to head back. I uh, you bow your heads to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come here to praise you, Lord God, that we have that freedom that you gave to us. Thank you for all the love that you've given us, Lord God, even if we don't deserve it. We, we, uh, we're just so thankful for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord God. We, we ask that the, the word that was shared today, Lord God, it is, is taken to our hearts, Lord God, that we be not just, not just hearers, but doers of your word also, Lord God. Thank you for all the blessings we ask that you keep everybody safe today. Keep fourth grade safe as they travel on their Georgia trip, Lord God. We, we praise you. We thank you for all our blessings and all your love. In Jesus' name, amen.